I think this is the cutoff. I think we're good. I think we're in the clear. I hate to use the term trim the fat, but I think the fat's been trimmed. I think all of the players who wanted to play in a guaranteed season over an ACC or the SEC, you know, I think all that's happened. I think, you know, I mean, Drew Bledsoe's kid, he he left because he didn't want to spend the rest of his college football season or his college football career on the bench. Mm-hmm. I get it. Cassidy Woods is on the transfer portal after the Rolovich Player Association COVID uh, you know, situation that happened over the phone, it, I, it, it cuts off here. I think we have what we have and we're going on. Yeah. Um, I, I kind of agree. I would say, I think the reason why we're seeing this all at once, obviously is because of this weird season. And, you know, anytime a new coach comes in, players transfer, it's just how it goes. Like systems change, spots are, are lost or, or whatever, you know, um, And since there wasn't a real like spring practice, people haven't figured that out until now. So I think, you know, a couple of these guys would have transferred in April once they figured out, hey, my spot's gone, but they didn't have the opportunity. So it's all kind of happening now. But I don't think this is necessarily the end of it just because there's going to be real practices starting soon. Somebody's going to lose their spot and with the, with this year where you don't lose eligibility based on, you know, if you play or not, this is a perfect year to transfer because it's a free year. You know, if you miss it, you're not losing a year of playing football. So um, I think we're going to see more players enter it just based on that, um, you know, when practice starts. And I think the big thing is going to be if the Pac-12 doesn't play football this year or, or, you know, the votes obviously still coming up. But if they don't play, then that's going to be huge. People are definitely going to leave. Well, that's the ticket. That's really just the whole, you know, X factor in this whole situation. It, depending on that decision on Thursday from the Pac-12, we're either going to see more Cougars transfer or not. But considering that all things are pointing towards that possibly happening, I I, I think that we're kind of leaning on a 60-40 uh, situation mm-hmm. with having a season. And with us having a season – that takes away their number one reason for leaving Pullman is I want to play. Number two reason for leaving Pullman is probably the, you know, the surrounding community. It's, I mean, we're a small town. I get it. But yeah. And now if, that if we, you don't want COVID, you should probably, probably leave here now. It, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, and it, as Pullman's kind of dealing with that situation and the fact that we may have a season, I, I again, I'm leaning towards us having a season. It, mm-hmm. It, it all just points to us keeping the players that we have and making sure, you know, we, we let bygones be bygones with those players that that had left, you know, especially with especially with Bledsoe's son, I think. It's just something that I think we, we all need to just kind of put to the side. We have our new quarterbacks that came in, transfers and, and recruits. We, we got a quarterback competition and uh, nobody was putting Bledsoe on the list for for the quarterbacks for the quarterback position, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I think the cutoff has happened. There, the biggest reason to leave was to have a season, and it, everything's pointing towards us having a season, I think. Yeah, and I, these next, you know, whatever few months, month month and a half, is going to be absolutely huge for Nick Rolovich because right now, if you're looking at this program, it looks like there's a problem. With seven players in the transfer portal, you know, that looks really bad on this program and possibly on this new head coach. You know, looking through the other schools, um, you know, none of them really had more than two. And a lot of them were cases, you know, of a good player leaving a team that's been struggling in the Pac-12. I can understand that. I get a guy at Cal wanting to go spend his senior year on a competitive team. But WSU isn't really in that situation. They were, you know, not so great last year. But this team has a higher ceiling than, you know, the Cal's and the Oregon State's. And, you know, there's a few, you know, there's a few players looking at this that I think are really important. So seven players. Like we mentioned, um, Tay Martin's obviously gone. He's at o- Oklahoma State. There was a lot more reasons than just football for that. Skylar Thomas uh, entered the transfer portal and then came back. So that is still an opportunity or a possibility for all of these players. Like Nick Rolovich can go out and get these guys back if the season does happen. But the big names I'm looking at, uh, Roderick Fisher was a guy who was this kind of left the team in the winter for a lot of other reasons. But really Rolovich hasn't had his time with him. And if if he can get him back, I mean, this was a four-star recruit. This was a big player. And at the outside wide receiver position where they don't have a lot of talent right now, he could be huge. 
um, Mike Petway was a freshman, didn't play last year, and he's leaving. That could be, you know, for system reasons or others. But I think if he's able to go out and secure some of these players that are trying to leave and bring them back, then I think that, you know, makes it clear that this isn't a problem, that, you know, there's so many crazy circumstances, there's things going on. Um, but if he doesn't, and if another player or two leaves, and I think this is going to be a really bad mark on this program because that just doesn't look really good. Well, it, I understand that it looks like a, a bad mark on the program considering, you know, we, we have new coaching staff coming in. We have uh, basically our best players last year that had left with, you know, the offense and the defensive side of the ball. Like, I, I understand that it looks like a bad mark, but I, I want to go back to Skylar Thomas because he came back to, you know, be that veteran secondary defensive player that we so desperately need. Mm -hmm. And there's two ends of this equation. There's something that's bringing people back and there's something that's keeping people here. And I think what's keeping people here is we lose people like Tay Martin, who is probably was probably our number one veteran receiver going into the season. And then you have players like Travell Harris, Calvin Jackson Jr., Renard Bell. They all get to move up a step. They all get to move up a rung in the social ladder of the receiver position. Everyone is getting a bump up at this point. Why would you want to leave if you're going to have a bigger role going into the next season? I bet you some defensive players did not think that they were going to have, you know, a, a starting job or a, a role on this team, whether it was on the defensive side of the ball or special teams. But they all get to move up a run. They all get to move up in the lineup after losing some veterans. And then there's some veterans who came back so they can help those newcomers get accustomed to the new team. Yeah, but the thing about that is that's not the case for everybody. There's a new coach you know, a new defensive system. So some players maybe got bumped down a couple of rungs. Some guy who's playing defensive end might be asked to play outside linebacker. Somebody who's be playing or, or defensive tackle, you know, move from corner to safety and they just don't want to do that. So those things happen when there's a new coach. There's a reason why there are, you know, a handful of transfers when a new coach comes in. And I just think since we haven't got to the actual on field, like real life padded practices yet, I think that's going to I think it's going to mean that more players are going to figure out where they fit in and realize, oh, I'm not going to start. I'm not going to play the guy ahead of me is a year younger than me. Like, I don't have I don't have a future here. And quarterback is one of those positions, too. I know you kind of mentioned that quarterback battle, but it's hard to believe that if three, three you know, three guys go into a quarterback battle, one guy's going to be the starter. And at least one of the other guys doesn't want to transfer, especially if, if a younger guy wins it. So. Uh, I, I would I would not be surprised if somebody else enters his transfer portal, whether it's, you know, in the next couple of weeks or, you know, during the season. But uh, I just think that's going to happen based on, you know, I mean, the precedence is there. A bunch of players are entering. So I, I think that these guys have it in their mind because they're seeing it. And if something goes wrong or not the way they want, you know, this is a free year. They can take that opportunity. Yeah, I mean, uh, considering we have seven up right now, I, I, I can see how there could be more, but you know, I, I, I think we're good. I think the roster is, I, I think we have what we got and we're moving forward, whether you like it or not. That's my poem of the day. There you go. 